Now, why Sony would even think of making a full-frame camera aimed at capturing video content without seemingly any thought that it might overheat is completely beyond me. Thankfully though, this small piece of kit solves it. But I shouldn't even need it. Now I've had the Sony ZV-E1 for about six months now, and as for the quality of the footage it captures, it's fantastic. It's basically a mini version of the FX3 or the A7S3. In fact, I did a video on it shortly after I got it, highlighting three reasons why I think it's their best and cheapest full-frame camera. But when I say cheapest, I don't mean cheap, because this is currently knocking out at give or take £2,200 for the body only. Besides the quality of the footage, the three main things that really impressed me about this when I first got it was the inbuilt stabilisation, the built-in microphone, which is surprisingly very good. And this is with the microphone set to front only to pick up audio coming from right in front of the camera. So although you'll be able to hear what's going on around me, that sound should be drastically reduced so that my voice in front of the camera is much more dominant. And the auto framing. But this camera has a big problem with overheating if it's used for recording anything more than just a few minutes at a time. Filming in 4K for short bursts of recording, there's absolutely no problem, but I certainly couldn't use it in a static position, filming some behind the scenes footage. I've tried it in the past and it would turn off, and once you start losing trust in something, it's very hard to get it back. Now I do a lot of live broadcasts, and I'm always getting comments about how good the quality of the live video is. When streaming with the ZV-E1, I take the quality settings down to HD, and I seemed to fix the overheating issue by making sure the screen was opened up and away from the body. I also made sure to take off the included windshield because that again is something pressed up against the body and not allowing as much heat to disperse. Oh, and using a dummy battery means the battery door is open. Again, just something extra to help with the heat dispersal, especially as the dummy battery doesn't produce any heat at all, unlike using a regular battery. Now this worked fine for me up until just a few weeks ago when I started having problems again. In fact, it was during a live broadcast, which oddly enough was the best time for it to play up because I had a guest. So each time the camera would turn off, I would just switch the broadcast view so that it was only him on screen. Yes. But what I really like is that my cloud storage for Lightroom, where I'm, where, I'm, oops, where I'm storing stuff, is nice and tidy. I would then manually turn the camera off, then on. The camera would come to life again, and I'd be good to go, but only for about another couple of minutes. And this went on for the entire one-hour broadcast. Now, the really weird thing is that when it would overheat and turn off, when I then manually turn the camera off and on to bring it back to life, I didn't have to wait for it to go down to a certain temperature it would just start working again each and every time. I'll get you to say something about that in a moment, actually. There's, uh, there's a ton of videos that you've got also breaking down certain parts of, you know, Lightroom, in brackets, cloud, slash local, mm -hmm. uh, on, your, on, your, on your channel as well. So we'll get you to... Anyway, I mentioned all of this to my friend Krish at Carmarthen Cameras, and he suggested I take a look at a cooling system from Tilter that was made specifically for the ZV-E1. And this is it here, which I brought for £75 off Amazon. And so far, so good. I've used it twice now since having it. Once during a live broadcast that lasted one hour and 20 minutes. And I've also used it with the camera being on for over four hours. And at no point has the camera turned off or the overheating flashed up with that thermometer icon because it's getting too hot. If you look at it here, it consists of a fan. And on the back, there's this cooling plate. And basically, when the fan is spinning around, the electronics inside cool down the rear plate, and this is what fits against the back of the camera. It's kind of like using an ice pack. Up until now, to attach it to the back of the camera, I've just hacked it by using a piece of wire to hold it in place. But now I know it works really well, I've just ordered the Tilter full body cage, which is designed to have the cooling system attached. Now, this also costs £75. So for the two pieces of kit, I've spent £150, which 
now I feel I can trust the camera again, is money well spent. Now, being a fan, there's the obvious question about noise that it makes. And yeah, it does make a bit. There's two speeds. So this is on speed one setting. And this is on speed two setting. But then you're not going to be holding a mic close to it like this in real life. I used it last weekend during a live broadcast and you can't hear it at all. Well, hello there. We are live yet again. Another week, another guest. And I'm also using it now, but you can't hear it. And this is all because of the mics that I use and their sound pattern pickup being very much focused on what it hears from the front and kind of eliminating anything coming in from behind. So the overheating problem is solved, but it should never have been an issue in the first place. What Sony were thinking when they made this camera, I really don't know. I mean, just even thinking about it, a full frame camera clearly focused on recording video content, but has no cooling mechanism. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, I could go on because I know that the camera isn't going to turn off. But all I'll say is if you do have a camera, not just the ZV-E1 that overheats, I definitely recommend taking a look at something like this cooling system from Tilter, who incidentally have nothing whatsoever to do with this video. I just wanted to let you know about it. Oh, and I've added a link in the description to the one that I got. But anyway, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up, a click on subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video.